What's the art of the evil laugh? Most people don't allow it to build organically. You have to imagine it in your mind. Think of something uh, that's deliciously evil. Think about it and let it grow. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Oliver, welcome to the Brett Miller Voice Show. Hi, everybody. A pleasure. A pleasure. Always my a great friend. A pleasure, my friend, to have you on my show. Do you ship Garsaco? What is what is that? What I don't understand. Do you know what shipping means? Shipping? Yeah. yeah no. We, when you ship it, you ship it. What I uh, what on earth is you ship Garsaco? You know, Garsaco, you know, shipping it. <laughs> don't you don't you hate this when people do this stuff to you? <laughs> the end ship. Oh, and they ship okay, and they okay. Get so Garmadon and Mis Misako. Okay. Garsaco. Okay, so you're talking about like Brangelina. Yeah, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you do ship you it? Sh do you ship? Yeah. Of course. She's an, extra an extremely uh, alluring, beautiful woman. Okay, so in that love triangle, you think Gar she truly belongs with Garmadon and not Wu? Don't even get me started. You started voiceover according to your IMDb in 1995. You wrong. Did, you did Gundam's. Ah, see, don't believe <laughs> wrong, everything wrong, on the internet. Wrong. Fake news. I uh, began my voiceover career with uh, a character on a show called Pocket Dragons, and uh, it was kind of interesting because it was an evil character, an evil dragon, uh, and I got told. That's too scary, Mark. You, you're just an evil dragon. You have a magic key guarding the secret cave. You're not the evil dragon that takes the children on a journey through the dark night of the soul. <laughs> right. so, before 1998, I was living in New York City and I just came back to Vancouver and I went to a <laughs> seminar that, that was being hosted by the Vancouver Film Festival about voice actors and I thought I should go. So I watched people who I now work with. I thought, well, there's nothing that they're doing that I, I don't think I could do, you know, uh, that I couldn't do, rather. What do you prefer, Master Garmadon, Lord Garmadon, or Emperor Garmadon? Speaking com completely selfishly now, I would have to say that uh, Lord Garmadon was probably my favorite because it was a character who was sort of teetering on the brink uh, you know, what makes villains very interesting to play is that you want to be able to see that they have a choice, that they can go down one of two paths, as you do in real life. And so you want to feel that tension of somebody on the verge of making a, a decision. Will they do the righteous thing or will they capitulate to the dark side? And I think that there was a, a room for this kind of interplay with the way that Lord Garmadon was, right. was written. If you were to go through this, the stages of Garmadon saying the words mo, me, me, so you're like, you know, a normal Garmadon, and uh -huh. then you're, you're Lord, then you're, what would that sound like? Mo, me, me. Make that a me, my dare ya. What would you do with four arms in real life? You wouldn't know this about me, but I've been an avid yoga practitioner for 20 years. So I think uh, I could, I'd be, uh, I've always wanted to combine various uh, postures because I thought, oh, if one only had a, a couple of extra limbs, then you could execute this sort of, <laughs> this daring, this, this daring yoga asana. So I would probably put it right into my yoga practice in right, some, right. some way. You like stuck in the tiger pose and you could finally scratch that itch <coughs> that's only in the snake. Exactly. Who's your favorite ninja? I'm partial to Kai. He's endearing innocence and uh, Sort of always um, sort of wide-eyed optimism. I like that yeah. because it's so alien to me. Like I could never play that. I'm always very admiring of people who can render characters that I could never possibly do justice to. Have you actually seen any Ninjago? Of course, I, I've, I've watched many, many, many episodes of Ninjago. Do you have a favorite episode or season? I like the first two seasons. You know, one thing I'd, I'd really wanted to do uh, when when we've had our sort of layoff times is I thought. 
we need Ninjago, the all singing musical. Because I thought it would be so <laughs> wonderful for all of us to be on stage and, and to render Ninjago in a, in a theatrical context. I, I think it would be, uh, I think that would be, would you be interested in something like that? <laughs> you know, like a musical the theater or the Ninjago the musical? <laughs> Ninjago, you, vote, you, hashtag, you can vote on that. Hashtag Ninjago the musical. Make that concept go viral, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, please. Is there any uh, moments in a recording session that have been emotional for you? Oh, many. Uh, I, I have to say that, and I don't know whether this is something that I share with other voice actors uh, that we are so lucky to uh, have this uh, forum to kind of exercise ourselves of you know whatever angst or emotional turmoil we may have in our actual lives. I, there have been moments in Ninjago that were sort of very tender interactions between Lord Garmadon and his son, Lloyd. Those could have been done, those could have come out really corny and I really hope that I did justice to those moments and that people felt that they were very, very real or, or, and quite moving. So I'll, I will always try and find a, a way to render emotional or psychological truth even within the context of something that seems sort of innocuous like an, an animated series, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you use a lot of big words. Big words, okay. Innocuous. Hold on. Strike that. Surrey. In what, <laughs> what is Mark saying? Do you own any Ninjago sets? I do not. Know, I do not have any Ninjago sets. You don't have your own minifig? No, I don't. Um, I, th I think I've got a keychain that I picked up in Germany. I had a good time uh, looking for stuff, and I went to the Lego store in Berlin. They asked me what I could. What was I doing there? I said, "Ich bin der englische Schauspieler." Uh, Wer spielt diese Character? He speaks in German? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ich, uh, ich spiel diese Character heißt uh, Lord Garmadon. Heißt, heißt Character. So, so they're like, unmöglich. Unglaublich. But then they freaked out and everybody was. Unglaublich. Unglaublich. Was, what does it mean, Mark? What did you just say? Unglaublich it means uh, un unbelievable or okay. incredible. So unmöglich I think it's impossible in German. And I knew that too. Would you want a mini fig of yourself? Yes, please. Okay, if anybody's got an extra garment on and you want to make this man happy. I've looked on eBay, I can't find them. They sell out. Read the description on my video. We have the same agent. Just put attention Mark Oliver. You'd be making me extremely happy, just so you know. What's your favorite thing about voicing garment on? I'm fascinated by the psychology that can drive characters like that. Right. Uh, and hopefully without repeating some previous performance by somebody else. So yes, I, I, I wanted to do Garmadon and I wanted to have ownership over that character so that people would walk away and think, uh, be, be hard pressed to think of anybody else who could render the character quite right. like that. When you originally died in the series, did you expect to be back? If you've been in the world of animation as long as I have, you uh, get quite comfortable traveling through time warps or falling through holes in the time-space continuum uh, and you, you, you rest, out, rest out for three or four episodes and inevitably you come back. Do you know that you're my um, top two villain? No. I yeah. did not. Yeah, you my, personally? Me personally, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. my two favorite villains. I've got some wallet sized photos for you. <laughs> <laughs> you sound different Garmed on season 8 and Garmed on season 9. Like when you're, you're awakening and then you kind of, you went through a transition. Mm -hmm. You want to describe what that transition was like? The closest parallel that I can think of is that uh, if any of you are familiar with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. When Frankenstein is created, Frankenstein the monster is very naive and I think that because Garmadon is kind of reincarnated again for this new season, yeah. he uh, lacks awareness of many aspects of his previous life, so he's rediscovering the world uh, anew. Right. But he's a quick learner. Right. And so that metamorphosis had to be dealt with fairly rapidly, but I, I had to kind of approach uh, the, the Ninjago universe around me with 
um, kind of all disbelieve, and then you know you start to, to see sort of uh, how can I say facets of his previous character. Yeah, yeah, through. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. What would you and Garmadon do if you got to spend a day together? I'd love to watch documentaries on the samurai sword craftsmanship. So I think we would probably take a detour outside of Tokyo to the workshop of a master uh, sword sword craftsman and and. Uh, be testing out um, all sorts of wonderful uh, weaponry and uh, testing our connoisseurship of, of samurai <laughs> samurai sword manufacturing. Couldn't have written that better. <laughs> <laughs> Only you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no one's expecting that. <laughs>